is our computer's screen at the moment. There's still work to be done that, sh that can be done later, or I can assign it as homework here, even though there's no homework in these classes. And so uh, basic computer screen, obviously, is some amount of content, pictures, text, whatever we want here. It's a brand new section. Um, you would need to do the same for the others, create some sections. I'm going to move out of the computer screen now, but before that, I'm going to hide these these little placeholders in that grid. I might use the grid later, but I don't want it to say A, B, C, D there, so I'll hide that. And then we'll go over to work on the art screen. So back on Notepad, you should see over on line 222 or so, there's the A, B, C. So find line 222 to remove those little placeholders. We're going to go to the art screen and we're going to create um, uh, a little bit of content here for this section. So art We'll back up to about one line, line 132, we already have these. We know what those grids are, so I'll remove those grids as well. I mean those uh, placeholders in the grid, just remove those. And then what we've got is, a, is the article, we've got heading, and the heading is called heading. We'll maybe change it to say learn art. We've got a screen about art, a screen about computer classes, art classes, computer classes. Here's a screen about art classes, art. A div collapsible set. We explored that a little bit last time. That's actually populated with some content. There's a section header. Here we'll create art 101, 102, etc. So line 113. That is a collapsible element, Art 101. Do the safety for the next section header. Then create a new uh, collapsible element to open up for Art 104. We only have created up to Art 103. So based on what already exists, you can copy and paste or figure out and create a new collapsible element for Art 104. You should see that it's a div with some data roles, and then a heading 3 for the main text, and then content is inside of it. So on line 129, I'll create a new div pair. Data role, collapsible, data collapsed, set to true. These drawers are not open until someone clicks. They're collapsed by default. They're giving, you're giving choice to the user to open it when they want to open it. The text that the user will see that they can click on is a heading 3, Art 104, and some content. We just put box 1, 2, 3. We can do the same here, but just to make it obvious, I'm putting in a paragraph. It's any content that goes here. Paragraphs, pictures. You can put widgets inside of widgets. This collapsible widget can have a collapsible widget inside of one of the drawers. I can put one of those list item widgets inside a collapsible widget. It would just be anywhere inside the div past the heading.
And that was for doing this. We have these that you can open up. Notice it's very subtle, but 1, 2, and 3 do not have any styling. It just says box 1, 2, and 3. 4 has a P tag, a paragraph. So there's a little bit more breathing room inside of the element with the P tag. Paragraph has some styling. This P tag right here has some built-in styling. And that has to do with a P tag inside of a div with a data role inside of something else with another data role. So jQuery Mobile is defining all of this styling, which we can override, of course. And that's why CSS is tricky, especially when you use frameworks, because there's a built-in style and a default style that sometimes is difficult to figure out what do I need to change to make it do what I want it to do. We will have a discussion on that, of course, when we customize this project. What I also want to create on this screen, as per our example, I want to make a side panel up here. A little panel slide in to um, to display once it's get once it gets clicked. So we've got a we've got a block placeholder. We'll have calendar line one forty. We've got our invisible grid here. Calendar. This will become a button. So we'll click that. It, a, a panel will slide in to display some of the latest events of the art calendar, <coughs> the art scene. Since it's a button, that'll be an A tag. Set it to href pound for the moment. We don't know what we're pointing it to just yet. But it needs to be data roll button. I don't recall if we have any icon that is very artistic um, from our list. Like, it'd be nice if we have, like, a, a paintbrush or an easel or something. No, actually, well, I guess what would make sense is a calendar. If it's a button to display the calendar, we do have a calendar icon. Yeah. So we'll get that a little calendar. So this is not anything new. We've done this before. Data roll button, data icon, pointing it to something. What will be new is the particular element that we are now going to display is a completely different element than we've used before. We've used sections for a whole screen full of content. And section could be further defined with dialog true. Remember, that'll give us a pop-up design. We don't need that. We don't need a whole new screen of content. We want a panel to slide in. So we have an HTML5 tag to give us sort of like extra content related to this content. It's known as the aside panel, uh, the aside tag, A-S-I-D-E, aside. It's an aside in the real world. An aside in a book would be you're reading your main text, and as an aside, there's extra text related to the main text. Again, these HTML5 tags, a lot of them come from traditional books and publishing. But we use article still here to mean content. We use section to mean screen. We're going to use aside to mean extra content, like a side panel. What's also interesting about using this one is because an aside is related to the current content, we add the aside tag in this section at the top. So let's back up to the start of our art screen. In the section, but before the header and content, 
give yourself a new line. So we're still in the art <coughs> section because this is extra content related to art. And we're going to create the aside tag pair. This is side content, extra content related to art. So that's a brand new tag. It has the meaning that it's related to the main content. It has no style, it has no design besides that until we start to add some of these data roles. So we will add a uh, data role to this. Panel is a data role that will make this behave like a panel. This needs an ID so that we can reference it. We'll call it Art Cal. Art Calendar, which means that that's the name we need to reference in the href. We should have written it down there. We'll have to go back. Um, but here we'll have a, we'll have the the ID as a unique name. Just very briefly, we will then write um, heading one art calendar. Now this doesn't use a header, data role header. It doesn't use a content. You know, it doesn't use an article with UI content. It doesn't use a footer. It's a completely different kind of screen. It's our D screen, A, B, C, D. It's our D design. We need to fill more in, of course, but here's our basic, our basic structure. We need to go back down to that link and set the href to artcal. So we need to go back down wherever we had that. Line 143, href pound artcal. So the result of that, get your art calendar, you click it, panel side, pan, side content reveals. All of the animation is built in with basic functionality. And all that we did was we, uh, we applied the data role panel to an aside. So real content that I might want to add here it would obviously better be better if this were, were dynamic we're not at that level in our knowledge yet meaning that it knows that right now is June uh, 28th and it would give us an authentic kind of calendar doesn't we don't have the knowledge to program that yet so we'll just have a static art calendar. But let's say we had heading two of uh, May events, and then heading two of June events, and then heading two of July events.
so uh, calendar, then we've got some months, okay. And then in between each month we can add some more content. Let's say we'll add some simple uh, unordered lists, bullet points. making something up. I'll take that to add something to June as well. <coughs> I'll copy and paste this just to save a little time and effort. I'm just populating this with some static content. It would be better, of course, for it to be dynamic. We don't have that level of knowledge. It'll stay like this. I would have to go in and edit it myself whenever there's any change. So this uh, side panel here, we've seen how it works, and we didn't specify, so it has a built-in animation. It has this animation where it looks like my screen appears to move on top of it out of the way. This screen, do you see how it kind of slides out of the way to reveal below it? I believe there are three different built-in animations. Here's another one. If we specify into the section, we've got a data role of page. Let's add a new attribute. Again, we'll keep ID as the last element. We'll say data-display equals overlay. This will animate in a different way. It's also in a different format than the other buttons. The other buttons had a data transition. Well, this is a completely, oops, added it to the wrong place. This needs to be added to the aside, obviously. The aside is over, gonna overlay, not the, not the whole section. There are three, I think there's three or four built-in animations. And, and it works this way. It's not that we add this, it's not a data transition, really. It's a display. It's an animation for all intents and purposes, but the code is very specific. We're going to display this data in an overlay fashion. The name right there doesn't quite tell it what it looks like, but here's before I made that change. Here it is after. Clearly a difference. Now the panel displays overlays on top of the content. Now you can click outside of the content to hide it. 
but a lot of people are going to think, well, I opened a panel, how can I close the panel? We should add a close button as well to the panel. Some people are not going to figure out. You can click outside of it to close it. And that's okay. Having a little redundancy in user interface is okay. Some people will figure out one way, some people will figure out another. Um, so we will add a close button that makes it obvious for people to click to close that panel to get back. If you go back to our aside code, I want to add a close button. We will do it before the art calendar heading text. We'll type uh, close. This will be a button, so a tag. Attribute href again pound art. We want when you click that close button to go back to make it obvious to go back to the art screen. We're in the art screen, but we want to close this panel to show the art screen again. Another new attribute here. We haven't seen this one yet. This is data dash rel equals close rel relationship. What's the point of this button? It's also to close this panel. In a sense, we could have made the art, I mean the href like that, that it doesn't actually go anywhere. The main ability for this button to close this panel is data rel. But the documentation that I read was it's also good to specify this for fallbacks. Maybe data rel doesn't actually work on a particular browser. But the href works on every browser. It's been there from version 1.0 of HTML 27 years ago. These are some fallbacks. I want to add a I want to add a uh, an icon. Data dash icon. We've got an icon called caret dash L. That's an L, not a one. It's like a left, caret left. Before I go further, if you look at it at this point, it looks like that. Uh, oops, one more thing. Data icon, uh, data dash roll button. So it's an href. The relationship is that it closes. Its role is that it's a button, its icon is the caret, which is a different kind of arrow. Now it looks like that. I don't quite like that it looks so big and obvious. I want it to be a simple little button, so we have one more attribute here. We can change this so that it only displays an icon, not icon and text. The default is that it's the button is going to display text. We add a data roll of icon and then it'll display text and an icon. One more attribute and it will only display the icon. Data-icon POS, that's position, because we can position the icon left, right, top, bottom, or Icon pause, no text. Do not display text on this button. Only display the icon. My caret L icon, for example. So now if I click, it's simply an icon to close. Maybe that's not the best icon. We, can, we have the close button with a little X. For me, I want to use that one because it looks like click it to move it back to the left. It's 
so that's what our code is saying there. Data icon pause, post, data icon position. So here we're looking at the various pieces, building blocks to build this particular app. If you have your own app in mind, again, we have these different building blocks. So how might I use this element, that element? What am I learning here? What we actually populate it with and what we make it do, that's a more complex thing, of course. I can teach these concepts and what works and what to, what to type and how to troubleshoot it and all of that, but it's still, even after our three months, it's still going to be up to you. Well, what kind of app do you want to build? What do you want it to do? Um, there's always more to learn. We can't cover every aspect of it because not everyone is going to need a very specific thing. I need my app to be able to interface with Bluetooth. Not everyone's going to need that. Some people will, most people won't. I'm going to need an app that can scan QR codes. Maybe two people need that, 27 don't. So in total we talk about these different concepts that are most universal and I'll point out the spots where maybe you want to focus on if you want your app to do a certain thing. Uh, but again, these building blocks. We'll do one more thing then we're getting close to the end of the day. Um, I want to show that we can also load external content. Right now we've been living in only the world of this SPA, single page app. Everything about this app about this website exists in one file, the index file. Later on we're going to connect over to the map. The map exists in a separate file. We could keep it in this one file, but the map code itself is another extra hundred lines. So we can keep it in a separate file later. For the moment what I want to do is from the art screen I want to point over to um, the, the college's real website. I want them to click a button and to go to the real website of the college. So we'll build another button. We've got an empty spot here that might look nice. It's a brand new button to load up the catalog of classes. And we'll point it to an external website. So back to our code. Over on line 161. We'll call this catalog. It's a button. It'll point to something. Data roll button. Data icon. Catalog. Um, I think we've got one bars. It's like a horizontal lines. It makes me think of, you know, rows. I don't think we have actually like a spreadsheet kind of icon. Grid is, is nine icon, nine, nine little squares. Maybe we'll do bars. What does it look like again? It looks like that. We have all of those 50 to choose from that we can look up on the website. And what I want this to do is the href will be um, the address of the college's real website. All the while we've been doing href pound something. Within our own app we're jumping to different parts of our 200 lines of code. The pound sign is the ID, is the anchor where we can jump into the right section. Now we're breaking out of this. We're going off to some other 
website on a completely different file or server. And that's, that's HTML 1.0. But what might be a concern is, depending on some factors, I clicked it and it went where I wanted it to go. And if I switch over to some other one, it should work. But depending on sometimes the browser and other factors, the code that we've written seems to work. Let's see if I can get it to not work. Sometimes, depending on some factors, it doesn't work. But here's the way to make sure that it works. <coughs> the reason it might not work is because it's still going to assume. Let's jump over to a screen or a section within your index file. You need to explicitly tell it, this is a link off on some other file, external to this one. So we will add another attribute, href. We will add the rel attribute, relationship. This is different than data rel that we saw elsewhere. Yes, there's confusion here sometimes. rel external. That should then guarantee that there isn't the problem that some browsers will get confused. Here should be obvious that what you're about to open is in an external resource. And for the moment, I want it to open in a, in a different window. Later on, when we get to the app version of it, we will, we will invoke the in-app browser, which is that within our app, we will open like a mini web browser in our app to browse the web. Right now, we're, it's a web project, so it doesn't behave exactly how we want. <coughs> but we'll also add target attribute blank to open in a new tab. Later, we'll upgrade this. We have to wait till part two of the class when we get this into an actual app structure, we will have a better solution here. We will have the in-app browser, a mini web browser in our app. You've probably seen it. Let's say you're on the Facebook app. There's a link. You click the link and a browser opens for a moment. You finish looking at that, you click a done button and it takes you back to Facebook. It keeps you in Facebook, that is. We'll do that later when we get to that point. But at the moment, this is an external link a catalog, opens in a different window. More specifically, we should point it over to the take a class link, which is sdce slash class dash schedule. Here's our project so far. We still have to address content. Structure's coming along pretty well. We need to address design eventually. I'm going to get tired of these colors. We'll be able to edit all of that. We'll be able to edit every aspect of the app. Of course, right now we're setting up the content and the structure. Mostly structure content. On your own, you can explore adding, you know, we still have here box one, box two. That should have real content. We'll get to that later. But we need to address I'm going to wrap up in a bit, but what we need to address address on the last day is I want to incorporate a little bit of uh, JavaScript. I want to add some customization ability via JavaScript, and of course the map. We will be able to talk about geolocation on the last day in two days. So this is our last week of part one of the class. Uh, if you if you look at the catalog, you'll see that uh, there's going to be a week vacation before part two starts. So I'll mention it again on the last day, but I might as well mention it now. On the catalog, we'll see part two starts the second week of next, uh, next month. 
part two. Let me just confirm. Oh no, actually no. I'm thinking about the other class. I'm thinking about WordPress. This is not WordPress. So yes, starting on the fifth. So a week from today will be part two. We still have one more day, of course, the thirty. I'm just letting you know. A week later, we've got we've got part two of the class. It is a brand new class, which means a brand new enrollment procedure. We have to have everyone line up as a brand new student. You can't come in here two minutes late like you've done this week and expect a, a seat. The class has dropped down a little bit from three weeks ago. Uh, I think, uh, and I've sh and I've s experience has shown that new people show up for part two. So I would try to show up about half an hour or so early, uh, like you might have done before because we have to do a brand new ad code, brand new syllabus, it's a brand new class. It's a new month, it's a new class, it's a new ad code and everything. I'll mention it again on Thursday, but that'll be for part two of the class. When we finish this project on Thursday, then in part two next month, we're going to talk about all of the software then that we need to upgrade it then to a real app, a mobile device app that can tap into the phone, where we can do databases, where we can do text messaging, social media, That'll be all next month. So, any general questions on what we what we've looked at today so far? Still needs a lot of content and polish, but we'll get there. Any general questions? Okay, we're gonna wrap up and have a little lab time uh, to absorb everything and to practice here. I'll put my code in the network folder, and again, I'll upload these videos. Remember to ask for the videos. If I haven't replied about the videos yet, I apologize. I get a lot of mails. But I'll try to reply as soon as possible, and then you can get the videos to replay what we've done. So thank you for coming, and we'll do it again Thursday.